With more, we're now joined by Kevin Lamoureux, Parliamentary Secretary to the Government House Leader, Conservative House Leader Andrew Scheer, and NDP House Leader Peter Julian. Hello to the three of you. Hi there. Hi, good to be with you. Uh, Mr. Scheer, I'm going to ask you to start us out here because Antti Rota obviously has resigned and it does follow that meeting with leadership uh, around the noon hour. I was wondering if you might share what you had to say with Mr. Rota at that time. Uh, well, you know, it was pretty straightforward. Uh, by the time of the meeting, uh, all four uh, party leaders had indicated w what they thought should happen. Uh, we wanted to, uh, to to have the opportunity to, to you know to sit directly with the speaker uh, and share that. It's a tough day for Parliament and parliamentarians. It's been a difficult few days. Uh, we also you know still have questions about how what happened was allowed to happen. And uh, you know on, on a on one level, I, it looks like uh, Justin Trudeau is happy to let Speaker Rota take all the blame for this. But we know that there are several organizations from the RCMP to our Foreign Service and our intelligence communities who would have seen the list of invitees and nobody raised an alarm bell, nobody uh, either either proper vetting wasn't done or it was done and nobody bothered to tell anybody. So uh, the fact that this happened is not just solely on Speaker Rota, uh, it's also on the government for allowing that individual to be recognized and uh, it, despite having his name on a list well in advance of the event. So uh, we're going to keep asking these questions. Unfortunately, Justin Trudeau wasn't in the house today. He was in town, but I'm so afraid of these questions that he uh, hid under a rock and didn't show up. And that's also very disappointing because this this incident is an international affair. This is, I, I can't think of a bigger embarrassment on Canada's uh, reputation. It's happened under Justin Trudeau's watch. It's happened because of something that his government did have control over. And he needs to show up and take his share of the responsibility, and he hasn't done that. Uh, Mr. Lamoureux, I'll, I'll get you to respond to that, please. Sure. Uh, first and foremost, uh, Michael, I do believe that uh, Anthony Arona made the right decision. I think we have to put it in a, in a perspective of sticking with the facts. Uh, at the end of the day, a lot of people were hurt by this. Uh, it touched the, the lives of uh, people in our Jewish community, Canadians as a whole, uh, parliamentarians. Uh, absolutely no one, no one knew uh, that this particular individual was in the speaker's gallery. The speaker uh, invited the individual to come to the gallery. The speaker then acknowledged the individual. And it wasn't only until well after the fact that it was established. This is why the speaker actually resigned and made the decision that he did, which I think was the right decision. And I think if we stick to the facts and keep politics, the partisan politics, out of it, um, that it's in all of our best interests. It was an embarrassing time uh, for the House of Commons. Okay, I'll jump in there, though, because, you yeah. know, I, I appreciate what you're saying, that nobody knew, but should someone have known? Because I think at the heart of it, that's what Conservatives are asking. Why didn't someone already know? Should someone have known beforehand? I have always had an immense amount of respect uh, for the, the speaker and the independence of the speakers, the speaker uh, galleries. Um, uh, in the past, uh, the speaker will acknowledge people that are in the gallery, and by that very acknowledgement, members will often stand up and applaud unanimously because there's a great deal of faith in terms of what the speaker and the resources the speaker has, and that the speaker has done due diligence in terms of the people that he introduces to the entire uh, chamber. There's that confidence that's there. And I think that that confidence was broken. And a lot of people were hurt as a direct result. And that's why I believe what uh, uh, Mr. Rhoda decided today in terms of resigning was the right thing to do. Uh, Mr. Mr. Julian, what's your take? Is Anthony Rhoda taking too much of the blame here? Uh, we, the NDP was the first to call for his resignation. And I did that with a heavy heart. Uh, you saw that in the House yesterday. It was not a an easy statement to make, but we felt very strongly that the, the size and scope of the appallingly bad judgment that was shown on Friday, the hurt that was caused across the country, uh, the stain on Canada's reputation around the world, uh, meant that Mr. Rhoda had, had to resign from the position. And, and uh, despite the fact that I, I believe he's been a good speaker, he led us through COVID, he uh, put in place the hybrid parliament, he uh, was there when the, there was a convoy takeover of downtown Ottawa and steered us through those uh, troubled waters as well. And so I, I think 
he did a good job, but the mistake was far too egregious for him to continue on there. And, and I believe him stepping down is a, a first step of what needs to be taken, the many steps that need to be taken to, to, uh, for reconciliation on this. Uh, with what the Jewish steps? What other well, steps need I, to be I taken, I do believe though? the Prime Minister needs to acknowledge and apologize on behalf of all Canadians for what happened last Friday. I believe that we need to have uh, committees of the House looking in and finding out every aspect of how those decisions were made. We need to have uh, su suggestions, recommendations on how to put into place protocols so that this never happens again. This, this is something that has hurt all Canadians and we need to make sure as parliamentarians we need to all work together to ensure it never happens again. Now Mr. Rota will cease to be speaker by tomorrow night. Uh, will there be a vote for a new speaker on Thursday or will that, uh, will the House have to suspend business for, for a time in order to allow that to happen? I, I'm wondering about the conversations you're having there Mr. Scheer. Well first if I can just say you know uh, Mr. Lambert talked about sticking to the facts and it is just a simple fact that no matter who does the invitations whether it's the speaker or individual members of parliament eventually those lists make their way to security officials who are what we thought were then tasked with vetting and doing background checks so so that is a fact. Um, in terms of what happens next uh, I can say that we're we're having good discussions. Um, one thing I appreciate about uh, about you know kind of the, the, the the, the way today has unfolded is that uh, th there is uh, goodwill to make sure that the, the, the week continues smoothly. We are here to do the people's work. We know Canadians are suffering through a terrible affordability crisis because of inflationary deficits driving up costs and leading to higher interest rates. We know Canadians want to see action on that. We know uh, crime uh, after the last eight years of this government has exploded all over our city. So it's clear that Canadians want us to do the work that they sent us here to do. And I'm sensing a willingness from my counterparts to find the best way to do that while respecting the institution of the speaker and the need for the House to continue doing its work as well. So those could, um, I expect those talks to, uh, to continue with, with that goal in mind that uh, all four House leaders uh, certainly are, are working towards. So Mr. Julian, will it be the Deputy Speaker that takes on duties then uh, indefinitely? Uh, well, no, I mean, as of now, we have uh, the Speaker resigning as of tomorrow night and uh, the, the Deputy Speakers uh, uh, would, would be taking on that workload until then. Uh, as what Mr. Scheer referenced, and he's absolutely right, we, we do, the House leaders work very cooperatively together and uh, we're looking through uh, the best way of ensuring we have a smooth electoral process, enough time as well for the various uh, paperwork uh, to be handled, for example, all 338 of us are candidates as of right now. And until you send in a letter saying you don't want to be a candidate, you're a candidate on the ballot. These kinds of things uh, take a little bit of time to work through. And so we're, we're finding the best uh, mix to ensure uh, that, that the, it happens smoothly, that it's uh, not untoward in terms of too, too rapid. Um, uh, deadlines. Uh, the other element to consider is that for the election of a speaker you have to be here in person and so MPs will have to fly in from some of the uh, events that they're uh, a part of as part of the, the Truth and Reconciliation Day this, this uh, weekend to ensure that they, uh, they can participate locally and, and then come for the speaker's election. So we're working through all of that. We may work late tonight. But there's goodwill on all sides, as Mr. Scheer said. Okay, goodwill. Mr. Lemero, do you think the House will have to suspend business for a time? I think the desire uh, from all parties in the House is that uh, we continue to sit, and as has been pointed out, uh, you know, date, debate important uh, legislation. I just left the, the chamber just minutes ago where we're talking about issues such as uh, in inflation. Uh, housing um, and uh, you know the the crisis or the situation where we're trying to uh, support the Canadians. So there's a lot that's there for us to be uh, doing uh, in terms of the house business, um, and the will seems to be there to continue um, and as much as possible f make sure that we follow the proper process uh, in terms of getting a, a new speaker in in place and uh, providing those uh, uh, individuals that might be entertaining the thought. Of of, uh, running uh, for speaker, the opportunity to, to make uh, their cases with the idea of using the preferential ballot, hopefully sometime uh, in, the, in the next week. In the next week, but does, again, does that mean that there will be a 
suspension. I, I open that up to the three of you because I think that's a question many people have, whether or not the House will have to suspend uh, proceedings until a, a, a vote can be arranged. Yeah, there are you know, discussions that are taking place in, in good faith, and uh, in time we'll find out exactly how that's going to work. In other words, stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, how dare you quote me to me, Peter Julian? <laughs> but we are staying tuned and we're watching. So uh, thank you for that, Mr. Lamru, Mr. Sherritt, Mr. Julian. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.